The story that I am about to tell you is stranger than fiction. It's got the third largest cryptocurrency in the entire world in it, a former Disney star that was actually one of Jeffrey Epstein's friends who was wrapped up in an underage sex oh, scandal in it, no. who somehow became one of the world's foremost cryptocurrency moguls. We are basically here to answer the question, is Tether legit? Or is it a scam? Is it basically just a private money printer for the global elites? Here's the craziest part. If there is a Tether crypto scam, which it definitely appears that there may be, Duh. it could bar none be allowed to continue into the future based on some of the information I'm about to drop in this video. What if I told you that Tether is actually easily utilized by intelligence agencies and global groups, potentially in funding foreign rebel groups without being tracked or linked to them or the government that they work for. And what if I told you all of this ties back to Sam Bankman Free? I was CEO of FTX. That has never had a good hair day, as well as his trading firm, Alameda. Does this sound like something out of a fiction novel or even a James Bond movie? That is because fact is always stranger than fiction. And we are going to dive deeper than anyone else into this story. Pay attention because it is going to get unequivocally weird over the next couple of videos. We will be attempting to answer all of the questions that I just laid out for you. But before we dive too terribly deep into that, make sure that you smash that like button for me. Make sure you hit subscribe. Boom! Bang on that notification bell. Comment anything that you want in the relevant sections. I appreciate it. Now, let's get into one of the craziest reports and stories you're ever going to hear on YouTube. Now, first things first. What is Tether? USDT or Tether is a stable coin or a cryptocurrency that is instead of fluctuating in value intended to hold to a consistent price or peg to a certain asset value, this one being USD. This means for every Tether printed, it is supposed to equal one USD and be backed one to one by USD. Now, Here's where it gets a little weird. Every Tether token is supposed to be backed directly one-to-one -one by that USD, right? Or a treasury bond. Tether is actually utilized in trading the majority of pairs in the world, Bitcoin, ETH, altcoins, etc., on all of the top cryptocurrency exchanges. And let's be real, without Tether, crypto probably wouldn't be where it is right now. Tether is the largest stablecoin in the world and the most popular. Tether has been around since 2014 and has about a $66 billion market capitalization, which means that there's about $66 billion USDT in circulation, making it the number three cryptocurrency in the world, third to only Bitcoin and Ethereum. <gasps> when Bitcoin hit 20K in 2017, Tether only had about a $1 billion market capitalization. Keep that in mind, 66X in like five years. Although almost every coin pairing has a USDT pair, Tether has not really ever told anyone what their reserves look like. Other stable coins like USDC and BUSD have, and they're backed one by one and it's provable, but not Tether. Tether prints directly from its parent company, Bitfinex, but no one really knows who buys it. But Protos shed some light on that earlier this year, stating two companies, Alameda Research, SBF, Sam Bankman Freed's company, and Cumberland Global were the two companies that funneled roughly two thirds of all Tether into the crypto sphere. Hmm. Sound a little weird? Why was Alameda, the quantitative trading firm founded by SBF and his sex cult lackeys funneling Tether into the market? New Tether is supposed to be minted when somebody gives Tether the equivalent in USD to create them. Sounds reasonable, but we've known since like 2017 that that's actually not how Wrong. it works. There was even a running bot that told us when new Tether was printed and helped signify a potential market pump, especially on the Bitfinex exchange. Change. It almost seemed some crypto guardian angel was propping up the crypto markets this entire time, but the real truth is way more sinister than that. <laughs> Although USDT has been here for like eight years, there have been zero audits, even though they promised one in 2017 and now it's 2022. Do we have an audit? Each tether, if it is what they say it is, should be able to be cashed out for $1. It is doubtful that that is true. Instead of auditing reserves like USDC or BUSD does and publishing them, Tether does an attestation, showing a snapshot of its books signed off by its paid accounting firm. Yeah, nothing to see here. Just like the gate.io reserve snapshot, huh? No need for a third party audit. Oh, our guys can handle it. Back in 2017, their attestation, Tether was skewed by its sister company, 
Bitfinex. Bitfinex essentially transferred in $382 million to Tether's bank account right before the accountants checked the balances. Odd. Huh? So they had a $1 billion market cap in 2017, but needed almost a 40% prop up to prove reserves? Weird. The CFTC has recently fined Tether $41 million for that exact incident. Go look at it. Tether also paid out $18.5 million worth of fines to New York State to settle claims that it misrepresented its reserves. They and Bitfinex had to cease all business in New York shortly afterwards. Even the famous Wolf of Wall Street called Tether a scam, Jordan Belfort. Not super bullish, but we'll move on. If Tether isn't actually being printed when money comes in, it seems more like a money printer or a laundering operation. Even though to launder money, there has to be physical money, not random printed fake money, you can my drift. Print some tether, take it to an exchange, sell it to BTC, convert the BTC into physical currency. Now you just made money appear, poof, out of thin air. This is all basically built on trust, not transparency. So who mans the battle stations? What genius and God-fearing righteous person holds all of the power? This is where it gets even weirder. Entering stage right, Brock Pierce, the dude from the Mighty Ducks movie. This dude is now running for US president, by the way, as an independent candidate. Again, fact, fiction, you know the drill. Now, it is noteworthy to mention his co-founding of the video production startup Digital Entertainment Network with a real business guy, Mark Collins Rector. He made about $250,000 at 17 years old every year as the VP of this company. The weird part was that in October of 1999, all three co-founders just randomly resigned. Then a New Jersey man filed a lawsuit alleging Collins Rector had molested him for three years beginning when he was 13 years old. What? Then three more employees filed a sexual abuse lawsuit against Pierce, Collins Richter, and their third code founder, Chad Shackley. After a $21,600 payment was made, the plaintiffs dropped the suits. Then when the federal grand jury indicted Collins Richter on criminal charges in 2000, the den founders then fled the country. When Interpol arrested them in 2002, they said that they had confiscated guns, machetes, and child pornography from the trio's beach villa in Spain. Pierce managed to get out of this unscathed, but it got weirder for him. And yes, you guessed it, entering stage left, Jeffrey Epstein. In early 2011, Brock Pierce visited the Virgin Islands to attend MindShift, a conference of top scientists hosted by Epstein? It's reported that Pierce didn't even know who Epstein was and flew commercial to that event. Hard to believe since it was like a year and a half after Epstein made news in South Florida and had to register as a sex offender that this guy didn't know who he was. The group that attended this event included a NASA computer engineer, an MIT professor of electrical engineering, and a Nobel laureate in theoretical physics. What the f was this guy doing there? Weird enough for you? Well, the largest stablecoin known to man, a former child star that was charged with sex crimes and can't explain his relationship to Jeffrey Epstein, fleed the country after being sued for molestation, plummeting his company into the ground, then essentially paying out hush money to the victims, and now he's one of the founders of Tether and the celebrity face of it. That's a lot of information to get in 30 seconds. <laughs> Even though he says that he hasn't been involved in Tether since 2015, but he's somehow wildly successful in crypto? Weird. Now let's talk about Tether's actual CEO. Then we will start tying this together with a friggin' bow. Jean-Louis Vander Velde. That's definitely a mouthful. We're gonna just call him John. He ran a company that faced mad lawsuits in China over unpaid bills and fines over late tax payments before he aided in the launch of USDT. Some of Tether's biggest customers say they have rarely ever even seen this guy. This dude is like a Bond villain always sitting in his lair. SBF even admitted that he'd never met the guy one single time in person. So that begs this question, who's running things? Exit Jean, enter Giancarlo. This dude literally used to sell CDs and DVDs in the early 2010s for like 11 cents on Bitcoin forums. And now at 57 is one of the controlling forces of a $66 billion giant, as well as a top cryptocurrency exchange, Bitfinex. I love a good rags to riches story, but what? Basically he controls the money flow from both. At first he was a plastic sturgeon, 
briefly. It is said that he grew a group of digital technology companies to over 100 billion euro valuation in Italy, stated on Bitfinex and then reiterated on Tether's website. But Italian company documents showed revenues of about $12 million in total. Pretty far off. Then he liquidated the businesses in 2008. In 1996, he paid around $65,000 in counterfeiting settlements with Microsoft. Okay. Then in 2007, Toshiba sued another one of his entities, Acme, for alleged infringement of its patents for DVD format specifications. Great. Then in 2010, a Monaco company that he owned, Perpetual Action Group, was banned from the Trade Loop, the online used electronics marketplace. A month earlier, an American buyer had complained about $2,000 worth of memory chips that they had bought from PAG. One box was literally filled with a large block of wood, <laughs> the buyer claimed. Tether obviously says that the guy sold PAG in 2008 and was not involved with the company after that point, before clarifying that he began winding up the business in 2009. Trade Loop's forums actually showed that Devasini was dealing with the complaints himself on the forum. So that doesn't really track. SBF took up for the guy, saying that he is there for the Bitfinex people. He's responsive 24-7, and he's not just responsive to crises and unbelievable opportunities. He's responsive to day-to-day -day operations. Maybe he turned over a new leaf. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. The issue here is that we see a lot of red flags, serial scamming almost, by the people running Tether. They didn't just smoke some weed back in the day or get a DUI or something. Real financial crimes, some stuck, some didn't but you catch the drift. If Tether comes to implosion fruition, imagine the effects this has on cryptocurrency markets on the fritz already. 10K is in play, but if Tether collapses, less than 10K is definitely in play, and a revamp of the entire trading system will ensue. That is probably why people are turning a blind eye to this right now, because they know the implications and the repercussions of it. And it gets even more sinister, but you're going to have to tune in to the next video in the series to find out why Tether might actually be utilized by the global elites and governments and shadow entities to print money and potentially to funnel money to aid in wars in countries that they could never be seen doing business with. Trust me, you don't want to miss this and I might even show you how to short Tether along the way. So if you like content like this, make sure that you smash that like button, make sure you hit subscribe, boom, bang on that notification bell comment anything that you want in the relevant sections. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for showing up to this video. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, everyone.